just know. I'm just going to let you all know tonight. These mics in front of you are not operational. Oh. We're, as you know, we're in the process of changing through all of this equipment, and it's not. Um, obviously, we're halfway through, so none of these TVs, which are all new, are working right now. That's why we have this set up, and these are your microphones. They're gonna. We did it last night with Board of Finance. It works fine. These Bluetooth boxes. Everything else. The only thing that I would say is, for the benefit of the people in the audience, it does help to speak up. But so you're saying these things pick pick it up? These boxes will pick up for anybody on Zoom. Penny, can you hear us? Penny looks like she's broke. Not yet. Hi. She's having a difficulty. Yeah. This is what we did last night, and we seem to be good to go. So you are um, recording, and you know. Penny is short. Yeah, she looks like she's short. It's cold out. She's outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's anybody else? Uh, Thank Thanks, Hillary. Colin, can you hear us? Or Bob? Tucker, I yeah. can hear you. Yep, I can hear you. Thank we you. can hear you, Tucker. Thank you. The confirmation. Okay. Good Mike. Whenever you're ready. Ready? Okay. Um, so we now uh, call to order our special meeting of the town of New Canaan Town Council, uh, set for 6:30 p.m. on uh, December 12th, 2023. Um, so we will uh, want to first do the roll call. Sure. Rita Petito. Here. Tom Butterworth. Here. Janet Fons. Here. Luke Kaufman. Here. Mike Morrow. Here. Maria Norton. Here. Kimberly Norton. Here. Hillary Orman. Here. Christina. Here. Eric Thunen. Here. Penny Young. Here. Jennifer Zonis. Here. Okay. All here. Mics are not. Excellent. Uh, why don't we start with the Pledge of Allegiance next? <clears throat> Luke, you want to start it up? Sure. I pledge allegiance yes. to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get that out of order, but we're okay. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's first uh, item number two on the agenda is the uh, the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes to the regular meeting of November fifteenth, twenty twenty three. I'm point of order. If I had an objection to the minutes, do I get it after we? What is the? So he would make a motion. Someone make a second and then comments. Yeah. So after he did that, or right now? It really doesn't matter. I mean, if he wants to make a motion, have somebody second it, and then it's discussion. Yeah, so okay. we have to use discussion first. Okay, fine. So if we could have a motion. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Okay, discussion. Okay, um, so would I, I'd like to make a motion to amend the well, minutes. Say so you have comments to make. Okay, I have comments to make regarding that. Please. Okay, so um, so um, uh, just looking at the minutes. First of all, thanks for the the great recap for the um. Uh, recap summary of the ice rink recap. I thought it was wonderful, um, but it didn't recap the personal statement. It mentioned that I asked for. It's in the graphic. Right. Okay. It, it mentioned that I asked to make a personal statement, which is approved, but then it didn't have any summary. So I was going to suggest um, just a quick, like one line summary of the personal statement. So I would suggest. Um, sorry, <laughs> I like ran here just to try to make this. This meeting on time. Uh, Ms. Bettino addressed false accusations leveled at her and others within an RTC email newsletter during the election. That is a summary of the statement. We don't have to go into the details, but at least having that, I would suggest. Okay. So um, I make a motion to include those words. I just, I think it leaves a little out of, like there's a lot of context missing for that incident. Like I didn't even know what you were talking about. So I don't know. If we need to go into detail, that doesn't even really reflect what we even knew. Well, I, but I, I mean, I gave the detail in my personal statement, which was recorded. Um, I think it, it, that's exactly what I did. I addressed false accusations that were within that uh, email. So I'm not saying what they are. People can go and listen to what I said. 
but um, I addressed the false accusations. That was my personal statement. What is the, um, where is the reference to it in the minutes? It, there it's isn't. Not, I Could you repeat? That the motion was made. Yes, that there was that. Could you repeat what you wanted to add? Um, so I said, uh, just as a summary, Ms. Patino addressed false accusations leveled at her and others within an RTC email newsletter during the election. I don't think we can characterize them in the minutes as false. That's a fact question. So just accusations. Accusations then? Yeah, I think we just simply say that the motion related to uh, addressing accusations, uh, I would say just say during during the campaign, uh, the most recent campaign, I love it against you personally. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I mentioned me and others, but either way is fine. Well, if you address the others, then yeah. you can say you and others. Okay. All right, so we'll, 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 leave it, we'll leave it at that. Great, thank you. Okay, that was at could the you very end. That was the very end. Could you rephrase it so that I can? Sure. Ms. Bettino addressed accusations leveled at her and others within an RTC email newsletter during the campaign. When we say, um, I just don't want to go down the rabbit hole of you, know, you identify the RTC. I think it's just better to say, that was addressed or accusations of whatever you and others during the most recent campaign. There's, there's been a lot of pushback. Um, you know, uh, I, can make well, sure. I was stressing specific accusations that were false, by the way, to me and others. I, I don't see it. I don't see a need not to say where they came from just because people may not like it. I mean, that's where they came from. I'm not, I'm not sure it's not like, I, I just, I didn't see them. So I, I don't know where that, I don't, do we actually know who sent them out? I don't know. Yes, the RTC. I can send you the email. There's, I mean, there's an email that was sent out with accusations in them. And, and they refer to me being on, uh, several people being on town council. That is why I felt the need to trust them. All right. Um, love of her and others during the, during the, uh, or others during the most recent campaign well but I, I do think it's i do want to clarify that where they came from it, it, it has nothing to do it's just a fact and it's where they came from so i it's it's it was a personal statement that i made it's here yeah that's the problem. wait a minute There's, i was mentioned and town council was mentioned and there was it was suggested that people should be concerned about that I did. Deanna, this is a town council yeah. meeting. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Let's, let's yeah. Just... She's an ex officio member. Let's just hold on. Hold on. I, I'm okay with a, a summary statement to be put into the minutes. The problem is we've got to be very careful about when it becomes too overtly political. Um, and I would, I would rather, you know, you said the, the your statements were made last time on the record. They're there forever. They're there on YouTube and 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 everything, all its full context of how you said it. I think for purposes of the minutes, I just think we could say simply, you address these accusations that were made uh, uh, against you and others during the campaign. Uh, I think we should just leave it at that. I just going further into it, the RTC said it, and I just I think we should just leave it at that. I, yeah, I, I mean, again, it, it's what I said. It's a summary of what I said. If you look at the other summaries that were included, they were pretty specific about certain things. I feel like we're leaving this out um, on purpose. I, I, I don't want to prolong this because I think we have other things to do tonight, um, but I, uh, I don't agree with leaving it out because I think it was important. I mean, the point was, and at the end, I, I mentioned that I think we should be, you know, focusing on what um, yes, what unites us, but we should also be not let it, having zero tolerance for this type of behavior. Oh, and I get that, and, and that's why I, I, you know, when you asked me to put it on, you know, I, right. and 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 yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I think your comments that you made were, I think, should we'll keep them there, and I just think for purposes okay. of the minutes, we certainly will absolutely augment it to reflect that your state, you made your statements, you addressed those accusations. You know, uh, made during the campaign season. I, I think we just leave it at that. And the comments that you made on the record will stand. They're out there. 
for anyone who wants to, you know, check them out into the future. Okay, yeah, well, I'm willing to compromise. I would, I would encourage all of you to, if you haven't seen a copy of it, though, to take a, to take a look. Yeah, I'm happy to send it to you. And, and again, it, it was the reason I brought it up in town council is because I was, well, several of us were pointed out as being on town council, and that's why I thought it was really important to mention it here, because if anyone's reading that and having any concern. Um, especially with what I and I others were accused of, that was really offensive and problematic, and I felt like I needed to address it. One hundred percent, Rita, and, and I, I, and you, we made the motion. Yep. You got and I it appreciate, I appreciate it. There, so. <laughs> okay, we can move on. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, amendments to the minutes? Is that it? It's terrible. Role model. Okay. Amend for motion then to approve them as amended. The minutes. As amended. Okay, so we will have an amended motion to approve the minutes as amended tonight here, uh, as stated on the record and as recorded by. Uh, Second. You. I have a second. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Unanimous. Moving along. I'm assuming it's unanimous, except we didn't see Penny, but she uh, she is. She's remote tonight, but she's going to have her uh, video off. So I think we're going to leave her as just an abstain since we don't have a vote one way there. She's multitasking. She's got another meeting that's overlapping that she needed to be at. So. I think we'll just leave her as an abstain. All righty. Um, we will now move to item agenda number, or agenda item number three, public comments. So are there any public comments in the audience or out in TV land? No. Nope. No one, no one from Zoom. Anybody here? You were? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll move on to first selectman's comments. Item number four on the agenda. Welcome. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to you. New. <laughs> this is, um, my first selectman comments, not discussion, comments. Um, so I guess the things that I'm gonna uh, mention are first the reval, I'm sure you have all um, gotten your notices and I'm making sure all the various boards and commissions are aware that, you know, Mineval sent uh, a letter to all residents with their revised um, evaluation, you know, property valuations. People need to remember that's your property valuation. That is not your taxes. You will not have your revised taxes until um, May of 2024 when the Board of Finance sets the new mill rate. Um, you know, so the average, uh, the average over the entire town is a 25% increase in property valuations. So if you were to be taxed today, the mill rate would have declined the, by the amount to have the same taxation. So people just need to know it's not your taxes. I know there's tons of misinformation circulating around town. So people can help, especially you as board members, to circulate that that is not what that is. And we should all be happy that our property values are going up. You know, it's uh, if you sell your property today, you're getting more than you did last year or five years ago, probably. Um, we're also in the middle of, uh, town's budget cycle. So I'm meeting with the various boards or the various departments in town and going through line by line, which is so much fun for everyone, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But as a new first selectman, it's important to, for me to understand all the detail uh, behind all the various budget items. So um, rest assured, we are doing a very deep dive on the budget this year before it even comes to the Board of Selectmen. So um, also, um, and then I'll be meeting um, with the chairman of the Board of Finance next week to start to um, offer guidance, but I didn't want to do that until I met with all the departments um, and understood sort of where we really are and what the needs are of the, of the town. I didn't think it was a real fruitful exercise until I had done that. Um, the other sort of problem, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out, but uh, the town was notified last week, late last week, that our pension fund uh, manager and administrator 
is no longer managing public funds. So that's Vanguard. Vanguard was bought by Mercer. Mercer has chosen uh, to no longer manage public funds. So we need to find, they originally told us by February 1st, which I think is um, unreasonable, but um, they said they wanted all assets out of their uh, funds by February 1st. So we are, uh, we're working through getting an extension on that. That's especially with the holidays and everything else, it's ridiculous, but um, that was what we were told. And then we'll have a little bit more time to find a new administrator. So we are working with our current pen pension fund advisor, Hook and Herc Hooker and Holcomb, <laughs> sorry, um, to sort of plan for that. We have met with the uh, pension advisory group in town, which is board of finance members and, and town, town hall employees um, to sort of strategize. We're going to be putting out an RFP um, for a new pension um, you know, manager and, it, and administrator. So um, stay tuned, but just to add a little chaos to the budget and my first two and a half weeks on the job. Um, that's that's where we are. Um, and oh, and ending on a good note, we, I'm sure you probably have heard, we got a 2 million, well, yeah. on Friday, Hartford will be voting on a $2 million bond for the Playhouse. This is an economic development grant through the Office of Policy and Management. Um, and it will go to offset um, the costs on the renovation of the house. So it's excellent news and, uh, you know, kudos to our legislators. You know, I think last summer, Brian Fazio was putting in the grant application and then Tom was doing some work and then um, Lucy brought the governor last week. So um, at that time, I think every store we were in, Tom was asking every merchant to highlight the view of the playhouse. So, um, you know, it was it was a great it was a great day, and um, you know, thank you to the governor and to the state and to all our legislators who worked as a team to help New Canaan get this great grant. So, so that's a great way to go into the holidays. Anyway, thank you. I don't think it's questions, it's comments. It's, it's, it's comments. Comments. Can I comment back? <laughs> um, just if there is confusion about the tax and the reval and the implication, is there a press release or something that there goes on? on the website. And Todd it's Labieri on. wrote it. Yes, Excellent. there's a letter that's linked on the website. But not Todd everyone goes on the website. And it went out to all the press outlets. I know that no one I covered his, oh, yeah. his article. Um, and then there's also mm -hmm. uh, linked on that um, a link to Munival and the letter and all that kind of but stuff. But just like the, the few sentences you said just says it all, you know, like the short and sweet. Yeah. It's kind of letter, which was sent out as Yeah. Yeah. I always say we have to get everyone to read and, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. We're trying to get the information out there. If people have suggestions for other outlets, you TikTok. know, TikTok. Honestly, you I can make it. Do, do we have an Insta, like a town Instagram? I mean, they're like that. Yeah, I mean, been, that's not been, the only thing, but we've it's been just, using all of that. Too, yeah. Then it sounds like you're doing. Of, it sounds yeah. like you're doing everything. If the, the, the trick is doing multiple right. ways, right? So you're hitting different types of you know audiences. So it sounds like yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And just uh, word of mouth with yeah. neighbors is probably the I wanted to say congratulations to you and all of the selectmen that won. It's very exciting for the town to have all new leadership across the way and. Very excited to have you up here and uh, look forward to a great relationship moving forward. So anything we can do to help, just let us know. Can I just add a quick one, just a comment. Uh, what you said about the taxes not going up would be true of me because I think my my appraisal is uh, about at the average. However, if it had been much greater than the average, I actually could get a tax increase. Correct. Right? That is correct. Okay. That's mm -hmm. correct. On average, it will right. be the same, but you're right. If you were significantly above the average revaluation, you'll have a higher than than average, you know. And every year, you know, the budget goes up every year. You know, the town and the board of ed both have bargaining units, have contractually obligated um, increases to salary. So it's not like we're, and that's most of the budget. So um, it's not like there's a lot of room to, um, you know, whittle with. So, you know, most people could probably expect, you know, an average increase to their taxes that they've always seen. Plus, you know, if if they're above the average, then that will, you know, obviously have to be taken into account. 
But a mill rate reduction is great news. Yeah. If it that, is, and if we tax foresee also, that coming, also, and that's yeah. the impact on our taxes, right? Even yeah. if our property values are higher. So I do yeah. think that sort of two sentence summary for right. people is, you know, but the mill rate, it's a good news that our town is valued so much higher, right? right? Like you have made a great investment here. Mm -hmm. Right. And the mill rate will likely come down. So right. and your auto you and your auto taxes will likely go down unless you bought a brand new car. Right. Like I just did. So, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Diona. It just got I, as I was coming in here. Just, oh, no. just, just, just a door. I was like, oh, my first first day with a new car. It's like I'm cursed. But, yeah. I just like to mention one detail. If if people have uh, a question about the reval, they have until December 27th or 29th to call the company for them so, to reassess. And they've been down there. They've been having regular meetings. Downstairs, you'll see the chair. Right. People have been scheduling appointments. To right. But I wanted to mention it. So if anybody's watching, they could capture that. Otherwise, afterwards, it goes to the Board of Assessment. And that date is on the letter that Mimi yeah. Val sent okay. which, that you can register to meet with them. So okay. all of that. Great. Got a lot of people down there. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm sure. But they don't find that. Yes. <laughs> It's a lot. Yeah, I, I've asked them every day. I, I go and say hello every day. Yeah. And I said, how's it going? And they're like, it's fine. They just have questions. You know, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's totally by appointment. If yes. people want to. You can't yeah. just show up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving along. <laughs> Number five on the agenda, the new Canyon Nature Center presentation. Hi everybody. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, apologies for some people have heard this for the third time. Yeah. But, um, it's changed. Good old life. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Bill Flynn. I'm the executive director of the New Canaan Nature Center. I have been so for almost seven years. Uh, I have been at the Nature Center for um, 14 years, and I also live on property. So if you've ever wondered who's who's in that house, that's me and my wife, who is the director of our preschool, and our son, who's at South, he's in second grade. So that's my story. Um, today, uh, we have a few uh, direct updates, but love to, um, give this presentation, which is actually at um, Tiger's recommendation when we, we had a meeting about a month ago to talk through initiatives that were coming up uh, for certain buildings and projects that we had. And he recommended getting in front of you all, not during budget meetings when they're four hours long and you know can get lost in that. So just a general update and also talking specifically about a couple buildings and that's why I'm here. So thanks for having me. So I always start off with uh, the private-public partnership that we have formed because uh, the more I do this, the more I understand that not everyone gets exactly where that came from. So in 1959, Susan Dwight Bliss donated 40 acres of her estate uh, to the town of New Canaan and restricted that deed. The other portion she gave to the First Presbyterian Church. So that was her house uh, for the estate. She gave that to the church and she gave the rest of the town for purposes of an arboretum uh, nature center, bird sanctuaries, uh, passive recreation related purposes, or a museum site. That's exactly what the deed says. And so in that first year that it was donated, the town government got together with six private citizens who formed the New Canaan Nature Center Association. That's what I'm the executive director of, that nonprofit. And the town made them the designated agent of the town to fulfill the deed. And we've been doing that since 1960. So that whole agreement was written in a one-page letter in 1960. That was updated to two and a half pages in 1970. But every time there's, well, who's who takes care of what and one of the responsibilities, it does come from that 1970s letter. If you've never read it and you're voting on things about whether money should go or not, I really recommend reading that two page agreement uh, because that's where it comes from. Um, and uh, also with our, our uh, certificate of incorporation uh, outlines, you know, what our goals are and that's to connect people to the natural world. In all the ways that you Just a brief overview of our finances. Um, you'll notice that big section of our $2 million budget, that, that blue section, that 50% is our preschool. So it is our biggest moneymaker. It's also uh, 
you know, for us, it's one of our highest mission driven programs too, of connecting kids to the natural world and they're out in there every day. I know some of you might have had your children at the nature center. Um, and um, it's a fantastic program. If you didn't know, it's the first nature-based preschool uh, founded in the country, if you didn't know that. Okay, just point of clarification, that 1.9, is that, is that revenues coming in or how much you spend? Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Sure. Um, next chunk, 17% is our summer camp. And our next 10% is our environmental education programs that we have for field trips and um, also our after school program. Dr. Lutze approached us about three years ago and said that was a big need. So we started that about three years ago and they bus the kids to the nature center, which is, which is a huge uh, plus for us. The last quarter is special events, uh, fundraisers, annual appeal, <clears throat> that's it, grants. Uh, this is information that's directly asked of us is how much of these programs are New Canaan residents and our preschool, uh, which is very large, is 86% New Canaan residents. Summer camp of 711 campers that go through last year, 90% are New Canaan residents and our after school is 100%. So of that 75% of our revenues, uh, mostly New Canaan residents are using those programs. Picture of tops are after school, getting some birding in. And uh, bottom picture is our summer camp, our oldest group. We we go out all over uh, and do field trips and you know hikes like that. Bill, that uh, fifty percent that you highlighted in the previous does that include all those preschool students, summer camp, and after school? Is it all uh, of those? The fifty percent is just the preschool. Just program. the preschool. So that seventeen percent is summer camp. Okay. And the after school would be that in within gotcha. that ten percent. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. First item. Uh, is, that has been on uh, budget for the last two cycles. Uh, it's never made it to town council because it's been removed before it's gotten there. Um, but just as uh, for everyone's information, any nature center projects are within the public works budget. Um, so uh, as I said, Tiger and I uh, work closely together to talk about different projects that um, <clears throat> are important to us. And then he works into his budget um, uh, what, uh, what's important to us. And this has been in there for the last couple of years. Um, this is an interesting building because the Audubon Society of New Canaan uh, controlled it until 2014. They had a license with the town of New Canaan and that they dissolved in 2014. So the first time it really came under nature center and town control again was, was pretty recent as far as the history of that building. 2017 was the buildings report uh, that was town wide where they assessed all the buildings. And this one was identified to have you know, serious structural needs. Um, when it, when I, I became executive director in 2017 and Tiger came and said, do you have funds to help out with this building? At the time we did not. Um, 2019, the land trust uh, was interested in using the building, renovating it and using it as their home base. Uh, they ended up not following through with that. And so in 2020, I went back to Tiger and said, we're interested in it. We have a program need. And that's when it uh, went back in the budget um, for the last couple of years. Um, when it first entered the budget, uh, it had a roof intact. And since then, uh, now it looks like this. Um, so it's dramatic. I mean, it's, it doesn't look like a, uh, fantastic place to put a preschool, but as we've, uh, talked with Tiger, um, we really do like, he does think it's still, um, reno renovatable. Wow. And we can renovate That's it. Adorable. Uh, it is also the original laundry house, so there is historic value. Um, I don't, you know, that that's not my my purview tonight is to explain that we do have a need. Uh, if if you're asking what we would want, we would want to see it renovated so that we could house um, expand our twos program, which is our highest demanded program. Um, and I'll outline that in the next slide. Now, when I, when we first saw, it, we said, well, why can't we just? There, there's a lot of red tape of this, especially being a town building in a park. It having historical significance. And so we said, can't we just put a new top on it? And the answer, that's where uh, Tiger can speak much more uh, to that red tape. That's not my area of expertise, but he said renovation is um, is the best way in his opinion. So um, that's where, where we are. So this is what we wanna do with this building. We wanna expand our twos program, um, not only would it increase funds for our project and initiatives, we're out of licensable space. Uh, so this came up in the uh, Board of Finances. Can we figure out another place? But we really don't have uh, any other space that we can license for uh, our preschool. We tried to do it in the greenhouse and that for uh, several reasons didn't work out. So um, 
we have run out of that space and we're looking for more. And as far as just straight numbers for what that would do for our budget, um, all in all, it would increase our revenue, net revenue of, of about $70,000 a year. And we just started our application process and we already have 20 kids on the twos wait list and this building would house 16. Now it wouldn't be, obviously this wouldn't get done by next fall, uh, but you know, this, the, the demand is there. Last year we had 40 kids on the twos wait list. So the reason the twos is so hard is the ratio is lower. It's four to one, not, not 10 to one. And so the classes can only be eight kids in a building this size. And so almost all twos programs are only eight children. That's why the demand is so high because there's just not enough two, two spots. I was going to wait till you get to the end. That's fine. Sure. I mean, you can interrupt. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Keep going. All right. So uh, the handout that I gave you, uh, the dot I really want to connect is if we make more money, we put more money into the nature center. And so the sheet of paper, they, you have a spreadsheet in front of you outlining $1.2 million worth of stuff. And that's what we've done in the last five years at the nature center. Uh, direct question last night, if you make 60 or 70,000 more dollars, what do you do with it? And this is an example of what we do with it. Not only is capital projects, um, these are just pictures of all the different stuff that we've done. Just filling in boardwalks throughout the uh, our wetlands was a quarter million dollars. So in order for us to do that, um, do you need a copy? Do you have a copy? I'm all right. I'm sure it's here. I got another one. Yeah, I'll share it. All right. That's fine. That's, 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 that's it. Yeah. Okay, so besides the capital projects that you see in the examples, uh, also we put a lot of ongoing maintenance into the build or under the property. Um, I, I think it's the only park that has its own full-time grounds and facilities director, um, just dedicated to the nature center uh, grounds. We also contract out for habitat restoration to one company, a different company we do for just down the driveway, um, beautifying and keeping that clean and maintaining our gardens. So pub public works does cut the grass, they plow the roads, um, do leaf pickup. And anytime that we can't handle something or we don't have the right equipment, we can call public works and they're uh, always very helpful. But we try to maintain it as much uh, as we can and we put a lot of money into it. And so we're averaging about $240,000 worth of money annually over the last five years uh, or $1.2 million total. So that, if you want the full story of all the money that goes into it, uh, Public Works can would be able to provide. Like the road was paved uh, a couple of years ago. Um, you know, when it, when we need a new roof on a building, those are capital uh, projects the town pays for. Bill, explain again what the two hundred and forty represents. Uh, between maintenance and our capital projects, that's just the average that we've done over the last five years. So we're averaging about two hundred forty thousand dollars worth of stuff. So each year, or yeah. So total one point two. When you say contribution, so is this money flowing from everything? That's um, uh, this is above our break even. Then I mean, where's the money? Okay, so you, your annual your revenue for the year was a million two, and that was just no. The the revenues are the what the budget I showed you. This is this is what uh, two, right? this is our annual revenues. Yeah. Anything above our break even by the time we pay our bills, and I just wanted to point out all of the money is that we put back into the plant and the maintenance. That's all. So it's averaging $240,000 a year just for these capital improvements plus the ongoing maintenance. And um, 1.2 million is the total over five years and it's itemized there. So are there any questions just about what I've said so far about Audubon House? I mean, it will come up again through the budget cycle. Um, all we want to do really is express that we have a need we would be able to use the building. This is what we want to do with it. And then it's it's in town's hands because you all own the buildings and you own the property and we just own the computers and the desk, you know, the stuff inside. So, yeah. I was just going to say, I think the Nature Center was originally on one of the ARPA requests. Mm -hmm. Why did it go away? Like, I mean, it looks we, like- we had, a, we had an ARPA um, award that went to grounds maintenance. So that's- No, this was specifically for- Preschool. For the preschool, yeah. Oh, you had dredging in there. Do you think that? Oh, I mean, so there's there are a lot of iterations of ideas for the ARPA. Mm -hmm. What our final request was was, and I believe the award was sixty-seven thousand dollars that went to grounds maintenance. That's that's my memory. We during the process we said we could. I I came to a meeting here and they said what would you do and I gave a whole bunch of things that 
who I could think, do with the money. And I think that's where I think they made the matrix at one point, you know, the grid. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I think there's still money. It's just a, an idea. I think there's still ARPA funds. So something to keep in. Again, if, if that is, if that's available and the town bodies vote to put it towards that, we would be very supportive. I think uh, need. Just to mention also, we did work with Greg Riley to apply for a grant through the state and we'll find out in January. So we might come back in January saying we just got $400,000 for the building. Don't worry about it. But <laughs> let's not, I don't want to count on that, but we do explore every time something like this happens, we explore all of our options and we work with Tiger very closely in public works to say, what can we do? And we're very open to all those discussions. Board of Finance came back last night and said, <laughs> You know, when it comes to budget cycle, lay out the different options so that we have something to something to work with. But my point is the the roof's caved in and either needs to be renovated or taken yeah. down. I mean, that's that's where we are. I don't think it's a particularly safe building to be just resting. Sounds like that's an immediate need that needs to be addressed. I um, think so. Yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of your twos program how, yeah. or your preschool program, I should say, there's is it twos and pre, it's just preschool, right? It's Twos, threes, fours, and then okay. fives would go into our pre-K years. Got it. And how long is that program during the day, in a day? Uh, depends on the age group. Twos are there for two and a half hours in the morning. Twos don't last in the afternoon because that's nap time. And that's then just... the other the reason I'm asking yeah. is because I have heard sure. quite a few people in need. Um, there's a need for, you know, preschool and for um, care, I guess, for kids. Yeah. Not just for a few hours, but actually like an all day program. And that's what I was just curious about if that is a potential. We have we have been uh, asked if we would consider doing full daycare. Daycare and preschool, they're very similar, but daycare is a, is a whole nother uh, uh, piece. It's, it's a really hard thing to run um, because you have to do it year round. You don't get to take all the yep. vacations and breaks and it is you know 7.30 to 5.30. So that is something that today, I mean, I've asked uh, our preschool director if they're interested in expanding that and, and whether that'd be smart, and we're not there. You're not there yet. Okay. It's a different licensing scheme, mm -hmm. too, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. It's, it's well, a it, lot of reasons, it, yeah. You yeah. can incorporate, I mean, I, I mean I've mean, i experienced with, like, yeah, yeah with, with, with um, camp and with, um, with like Montessori's, they incorporate yeah. learning with the daycare, and so well, I, it's I, possible, I, but it's, it's education your point is, is the licensing is different. It is different. That daycare doesn't have yeah. a, a educate, like it is an educational yeah. program. It's different it's, though. It's set up very different. Yeah. We like how our business is set up and yeah. our organization and, you know, we don't, we, we're not ready to make a major shift. Like Got that. it. Okay. Thank you. Bill, is the yeah. TWOS program or any of the programs just in the morning or do you provide them in the afternoon as well? We don't do any afternoons. We dropped that. Uh, I don't times. know what years ago, but especially for those younger ages, they all go home and it, it's again, nap time. And, and so the demand for afternoon was very, very low. Unless you do, you have to get cots and you have to get all the thing and then you do nap time in the school program. But again, that's kind of going more into the daycare world. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill. Yes. I'm asking how many kids are would be in this two, twos program? How many kids can they can accommodate? There'd be Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be in eight kids and Tuesday, Thursday would be eight. Okay. So and you pay 70,000 in, in additional revenue? Okay. Yeah, and then also our little explorers, which is a, like a mommy me program, uh, doesn't have a home. We kind of move them around, and that would be a perfect home for them. And that's about twenty thousand uh, dollars worth of rent. Could you in children in the? That's about forty-five. Uh, hold on, I have a there. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I made this for a reason. Like, okay. <laughs> Do you, is, have you envisioned, would there be any uses for, I, I don't know what time of day the two right, programs, maybe you just said that. Yeah, what, is there a use for it in the afternoon? Not currently. Could, but could there be the potential for some after, you know, after well, school? Well, after, after school, um, we, we do extended days with all of our preschool programs and lunch bunches, and they're all in, in other rooms right now. Mm -hmm. And we have enough of those rooms to fill that need. Okay. Uh, anything else, Bill? Well, I haven't even gotten to the greenhouse yet. Yeah, so. oh, greenhouse. You wanna, <laughs> thanks, for the, thanks for the poke. Um, the greenhouse, uh, the roof has not fallen in, so it's we're not we're not quite as dire right. yet. Um, yeah, it has a roof. It so. has a roof, so that's that's a plus. Uh, it does um, uh, it does leak a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, are there plants in there? <laughs> there are a few plants. Uh, our current problems in our greenhouse, and this is something that we are going to come to town eventually and ask, so we're putting it in everyone's head. Um, 
all the temperature regulation systems in that building have failed. We cannot actually have a growing program because it gets 110 degrees in the summer and we can't control that. Hmm. The only thing we can grow is succulents, which we do. And we have a wonderful succulent farm in there because that's the only thing we can grow. Um, it's laid out in a very strange way, so we can't utilize it for event space or meeting space or other uses that we have. So there are ways in which we would love to see this building renovated. Um, there are a few things that we talked with Tiger about possibly doing now. One is this ramp uh, was built uh, before ADA laws uh, were in place. So it's a lovely ramp that's not ADA compliant. So the building is not ADA compliant. Um, so that ramp would either have to be rebuilt or if you take the second floor and make it storage only, which we're very open to because we don't utilize it, you can do away with that ramp and not have to put an elevator in the building. Those are the types of discussions we have with Public Works to make these uh, projects a little bit more reasonable. Um, there's a few other things like taking this middle staircase out and we have to have to fill in, there's two steps down right underneath it. That's what makes the building not ADA compliant. So we're looking at making some of those changes just in the meantime. Uh, while we figure out the rest just to make it uh, compliant and a little bit more usable for us. Um, it's built in 1982 and there hasn't been any major maintenance done except for a couple of insurance claims and some pipes first, uh, but it's time it, it needs some it needs some love in order to have a future. Um, what we ultimately envision in there is, um, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with our pollinator pathway group, if you're not, that involves Public Works of New Canaan, the Conservation Commission, uh, Nature Center, Land Trust, Planet New Canaan, the Library, Grace Farms, um, Beautification League, Garden Club, they're all part of this. We meet regularly and we, we uh, do education initiatives around this. The uh, Greenwich Land Trust has a very robust native seed uh, program that they harvest all of them locally, they propagate them. That's what I envision here is inviting all those groups to use the space for that and sending all these wonderful native plants out into the town. So that, that's my vision of it is making it a community greenhouse with all these groups and having a really useful purpose. And then if we open it up a little bit, we can use it more. So we anticipate a capital campaign on our end when it comes to what our ask is of the town is when it comes to the bare bones of buildings. So that's how typically how it works is if there's HVAC work or a roof or something like that, that's where we ask town to take care of the bare bones and then we come in with the rest. So that's, that's will come down the pipeline at some point. It's very, it's very high on our board's list to solve that problem. And we're not, now you know that we're gonna be asking at some point for town to contribute in some way. Has Greg looked at this at all for any sort of sustainability? He has. Hydroponic um, grants. You know, um, <laughs> he, Greg, about twice a year is like, what do you got? And he comes, he's coming by next week. Great. Do a tour, look at all the buildings. And, you know, so again, we're always exploring other options. Um, we like grant money. So uh, we're happy, <laughs> happy to look for it. Do you use the classroom space that's in we the do. greenhouse? We can't license that classroom space for a lot of reasons. So we use summer camp, it uh, does qualify. So we use a summer camp room, our mommy and me program, our little explorers is in there during the school year now. We can't have there in the summer because it's a little hot in that. Place. One Only tends to hot. What? One tends to hot. A uh, little, but not for the <laughs> cacti that are in there. So it's a greenhouse. Um, again, it's it's not it's not falling over. It needs some love and we'll, we're working on it. So. Yeah, and just a suggestion. I know in terms yeah. of the grant money, I, I was I was wasn't kidding. Hydroponics is a really hot area, and hot meaning <laughs> not that kind of hot. Um, but there might be grant, definitely grant money there. So it's just just a thought. More questions? That is. Going over the ten minutes, but thank you all. All right, that. thank you very Thanks much, Bill. So Great presentation. All right. Um, next up, item number six on the agenda. So budget process discussion of the upcoming budget development schedule on process. And the floor is yours. And John. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> you have a little gong to take over. <laughs> I'd like to hear a suggestion. <laughs> Everyone? Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hello. 
So Deanna kind of gave an overview of where we are right now. Uh, I, I guess I can kind of bring you up to speed of how we got to where we are. In early October, I sent out the templates to all the departments asking for their operating budgets and capital budgets that are updated. Uh, kind of goals and narratives for the year, as well as their performance metrics for the previous years. Um, they had until uh, Thanksgiving-ish, we started our meetings uh, with Wolfer Selectman and uh, Director of HR, Tucker, and myself, uh, going with each of the departments in and out, uh, preliminary um, aggregate operating budget, going really line by line uh, through the budget, it's, you know, it's a long process. It's a really educational process for, I think, everyone. We see what's supposed to be going into each line, what historically has come out of each line. And uh, it just kind of, I think every year just gets the budget a little tighter, a little more cohesive and just kind of gets rid of unnecessary lines and combines them into whatever. And so we're kind of coming up to the end of that process. We have maybe one or two more meetings and then we'll have hopefully a budget put together for a packet for the board of selectmen and then to the board of council council what do you anticipate uh the timing for the presentation to the board of selectmen i think they start in yeah, january it's all set. 16th those, those meetings are all up there um january i think you're right january 16th and then they meet through january and then it goes to board of finance but those meetings are all up there. Mm -hmm. yeah so it would be it would be great. Just that's a really good segue to um, for any of you to follow along if you want. I mean, you can always go back and listen to a recording or join on Zoom. Join us. Yeah, and actually, that's um, thank you for reminding me, Tucker. Um, and I'll, we'll have more discussion on this in, in the near future. But um, you know, as as you all know, I think you could tell I'm trying to tighten things up and move things along, and make them a lot more efficient. Our budget process, and those who've been through a few of them know that um, it's a long process, it's cumbersome, it's tedious, even before it gets to us. Uh, and, you know, um, our meetings, especially in March, when we have, you know, two meetings a week and I like, you know, bunker buster, three and a half hour things, I'm looking to eliminate that type of a long, long process. And when I say eliminate, meaning severely truncating it. And I've actually spoke to several of the department heads already and they're highly receptive to moving things along in, in a little bit of a different way whereas instead of having the department heads come to us you know giving their presentation literally for the fifth time and especially with the board of ed i mean it's like a, you know uh, an endurance test with you know <laughs> a phalanx of of the board uh, you know of dr lutzi and his his you know c-suite sitting there you know, after a long day uh, and they're waiting and then they have to give that presentation and then they come back for another one. Uh, I don't think it's particularly productive uh, for us as a body. I think it's uh, kind of a little cruel and unusual for the uh, department heads to, you know, give a, a same presentation like a fifth time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to really do our homework prior to us commencing our review of the budget because it has been so scrubbed. Uh, and examines, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm like, I'm like a nerd. I have a long commute, so I put it on in my car and I listen to, you know, the board of finance presentation and I try to really understand what the asks are. Uh, so I show up and then if I have any questions, I ask them rather than sit, you know, have Dr. Lutzi give, you know, his presentation, and then for the first time say, well, what about this? What about this? So I, I want us all to really think hard about how we can allocate our time in January and February to really understand what these budgets are, because my, I really anticipate like when a tiger comes up, says, you know, we'll give him, you know, I'll give him 15 minutes. Give me your top line. What do you think we need to know? Because we've heard it already. And then just straight to questions. And honestly, if there are none, then let's move it along. Um, if you guys are all in agreement, I can't dictate that. I just hope that you would see the value in that. Um, so now that, you know, like I said, there's <clears> you know, Almost all of us have been through the budget process several times, um, and I think we all see room for improvement here. And for our new members, uh, you know, I, I want you to come into a new process where it's much more laser focused on us asking any questions that we may have. And the other thing, too, and all the department heads that I spoke to said the same thing. Tiger said it. Dr. Lutzi said it. Uh, police chief. 
we have the ability to send questions into the department heads at any time. They are hyper responsive and receptive to any questions that we have. So let's utilize that ability. And if we are seeing a presentation to the board of selectmen or to the board of finance, or we're, and we're getting um, you know documents uploaded to our tablets, if we have a particular question, shoot it over to Tiger. Tiger is super responsive. You know, Dr. Lutze and his crew are 100% responsive. And in fact, Dr. Lutze said he would welcome questions from us at any time on the budget process. If any way to just narrow this, this you know, monster, uh, you know, effort um, to a, a much more fine point at the very end when it comes to us. So to the extent you could, you know, cogitate and chew on that, I'd appreciate it. Can I make a suggestion? I think sure. you, you made some really good points. And I, I, so agree, it's cruel and unusual punishment for, to have them just constantly be repeating the same thing over and over again. I wonder, I mean, these things are recorded. Would it make sense? And you mentioned this, like we should all be doing this, but to, to, to have us commit, we would all at least watch the first presentation. I, I do think though, sending in questions separately, sometimes of one person's question will spur another one. I wonder if there is, it's almost you make it two sessions, one where you have the original presentation, we gather questions, and then maybe like the questions are all asked. What do we do for board events? Yes. Yeah, what you've done in the past is you can yeah. submit your questions to the committee people right. that are responsible for like that, that department. Like and that they correlate all those questions. If all three of you ask the question and then they send them out and get the answers. Right. Yeah. I, I'm just saying when you're hearing other people's questions or seeing them, it's right. going to spur something on. So that's the only thing that I was missing a little bit from that when it was, if it's separate. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. Yeah, but, I love it. That's great. Can, I, can you copy the whole town council when you ask somebody a question? Well, if you don't have a discussion, yeah, just can't. Time. Then you can't come back and say, "Well, what about that?" Because then you're having. Yeah. Sorry. So on our tablets, we only see town council um, documents, and it would be helpful when the board of finance is meeting. We know what they're talking about. Or board of. This has been an ongoing problem where we're asked to to sit through the meetings, but we don't have the paperwork and are, are unable to formulate some of the issues that are coming up because the information is not available. So if that's the way we're gonna go, then the information given to the Board of Finance has to be given to us and it can be updated as the Board of Finance um, budget is updated. Would this be helpful if, um, one of the things that we've been doing for Board of Selectmen, they seem to have a, a lot more in the way of documents, but is when we post the agenda, we also post a public packet uh, that is all of the documents, so for the public. They don't have, obviously have tablets, so the public can go on a website and all of the documents that are on the tablets are also available in the public packet. We could do the same um, for town council and board of finance so that you could just access them that way. If those are the documents that are going to be presented and worked on, then yes, absolutely. Great idea. Because here it's organized by meeting date, so yeah. we know where to go, town council folder. But right. you're saying this would be somewhere different? It would be on the agenda at the page on the website, right? Just like on the calendar. The but calendar. I wouldn't want it on the, it has to be in our tablets. Well, you can you can access it on your tablets just by going to the website. You, you're talking, saying OneDrive. You could just the like, the, no, it's, it's not the same. So you want them downloaded onto download, the Download onto the tablet. Like access to the folder that yes, they see. Yes, it could they be your folder that says Board of Finance. Yeah. Right, let me talk to uh, I IT. Can I just ask a question though, in terms of that? Because I, that's what you're saying, because you want to be able to access it. But, right. but honestly, if it's um, if it's housed somewhere, you were, you constantly have the ability to access it. Is it because you want to print it out? Or I'm just trying to understand it. It's, the... it's a couple of things. It's because you want to print it out, but you're not always able to go to the website. Um, and the website is another conversation. It becomes too cumbersome. You mm -hmm. cannot get to all the documents at once. Mm -hmm. And then you have no way to refer to them unless you go back to it. And if it was an updated version, you may not have the documents that you were working with before. And it wouldn't, I'm not sure it would be organized the way the OneDrive is. It's organized by date. The way we do it with Board Selectman is like the agenda for December 5th. Mm -hmm. The agenda was there. Um, and then you'll see minutes and things like that. And then there's public documentation. And that's everything that's on all the documents that they're going to be looking at during the meeting are there for the public. That's how the press gets access to all of the documents. And it's available 24 seven. Anybody who has access to the web can get it. Um, if you didn't have your tablet or but we'll, 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 I mean, I can talk to it and figure out. Like if they could just turn on the board of finance, give us permission to see that folder. I, I just, I don't, is there anything we shouldn't see? No, no, no. no. Yeah. 
to my company. I mean, this is literally what my company does when we have like all different departments and we're all doing, there's one folder with all of the different departments budgets in it that you can access at once. So it's, you're not trying That's to go yeah. in millions of different right. things. But it's, I mean, it's on the website, right? It's, 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 it's housed in one place. It's not housed on our computers because it's a lot of stuff, right? But it's, but it's like planning folder for 2024. It's very easy. It's very easy to access. It's all very organized. Like, I guess what I'm saying, I'm trying, I'm trying to get to your solution without adding a lot of extra work of like downloading on, you know what I mean? So I think it's just a permission a, thing. The central place like on the folder. But I'm also yeah. thinking about the public. I mean, the public should have access to all oh, of those. 100%. Well. And same. sometimes I can't access the shared drive. So it would be, yeah. it's helpful to know that it's also yeah. on the website. Yeah. I think there's a solve. I think there's like a solve out there that, that is, that, that is practice that works pretty well that we might learn from. So none of this is going to count against your 10 minutes. All right, let me, I'll look into it. Okay. But Mike, just, just to awesome. clarify, yeah. so we would still have the meetings with the department heads and the town council, but you're just hoping they could be shorter because you're not going to make them go through. Correct. That's exactly right. I might just, just so you know, my, my sense is that in the case of Dr. Lutze, um, he feels that he can, he, his case will be appreciated more if he makes some kind of a presentation. Oh yeah. That's not, his yeah, option. Yeah. Right. And no, it, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I chatted with him and whatever right. he feels he needs, what he appreciates right. the effort to try to, you know, kind of tighten things up. That's all. But I'm all, I'm all for following this earlier in the process yeah. um, when other boards consider it. It might be helpful too for the subcommittee heads when our committees are formed and functioning to come back at our town council meetings and say, you know, we met with Parks and Rec or Department of Public Works, here are the top five capital projects mm -hmm. and the other things about the budget that you should know, and just flag that. that that's how our subcommittees, I feel like, in my opinion, could work to the benefit of us, just to flag those sort of major budgetary issues, so that it's not like a 50 page PowerPoint where we're trying to figure out what the priorities are. Dividing like that should come out so, of those dividing uh, I'm really happy you mentioned that. I was going to raise this a little later about our committee assignments, okay. but that's exactly what I want our committees to be, you know, far more proactive, especially in the budget season. That whatever chair you are and whatever committee, you really do have an obligation to listen to the department head um, presentations, get access, review their budgets. And in our committee reports, I really, I do want, like, hey, they met, like, this is what Tiger wants, is this is what was discussed here, this is what was discussed, whatever. Uh, but I want our committees to be a lot more proactive in terms of interfacing with the departments in the early part of the, well, throughout the budget season. So like in a, you know, a January, our January meeting, like we should have committee reports saying, hey, I heard the Board of Selectmen discussion mm -hmm. and here's some issues on my committee. And so it's divide and conquer mm -hmm. and we have a far more robust use of our committee. So what you said, I think is absolutely on All of this is lost. Well. <laughs> so right. Moving along. So are we done with uh, the budget process? Anything else? All right, item number seven, financial update. Financial and budget update, review and discussion of uh, year-to-date financials. What was yours? Hello, uh, in front of you and on your tablets, there are the year-to-date financials as of November 30th. Uh, you should also have uh, just a short list of highlights, but I will quickly run through them. Um, so this one just shot of the 50% mark through the year, um, and the overall revenues are at 54%, 54.5% for uh, 87.3 million. The overall revenues are exceeding last year's pace by 2.9%, and have a notable increase of 300,000 from last year. Uh, that uh, from last month, sorry. Uh, that, of course, is led by tax collections. The current year tax collections are at 55.43% uh, or $83.2 million. Uh, prior year tax collections are lagging behind a little bit, especially from last year uh, at 24% uh, or $72,000. Uh, down to building permits. Building permits at the 50% mark are just about 50% through what was planned for the budget, which was uh, 850,000, so we're at 430,000. Uh, this also marks kind of the end of the first month that we've gone through 
uh, using OpenDub, the new software that Land Use Help and building and, and, and put together as a one stop shop for all of their needs. On to conveyance, conveyance fees, they're at 45.6% for 684000 um, Trending downwards from last year, which was kind of expected, but uh, trending on with what we had planned for the $1.5 million uh, budget for FY24. Down to interest on investments, they're at 60. Parking. Yes, parking, you're right. Sorry. Right. That's the one that needs an explanation. <laughs> so, parking, parking is at 28.4%. Um, but when you dig into the details of parking, uh, the revenue from meters and tickets are on track, about 50% of what was budgeted. But when you look at the parking permits, uh, they have a bit of a delay in where they are. Um, Tucker can probably speak to the timing issue. A little uh, bit. We we extended the parking permit renewal period for two months because of the shutdown last summer. Uh, we just didn't, you know, we wanted to give everyone two months um, more time to make those decisions. And since then, um, the parking per permit renewals have gone out, and they had November 30th to return. And remember, we had two lists. We had a priority list. Anybody that had a parking perm, a lumber yard permit was allowed to put their permit on hold for two years during COVID to decide if they not lose their space. So there's the priority list and then the regular renewals. Um, we sent out the renewals by email. We got kind of a lackluster response. So what we decided to do in response to that was because some people said it went into junk, you know, that kind of thing, is we actually went and sent the letter, physical mailers to anybody that hadn't responded, telling them they had till December 28th in-house, not mailed by, in-house by December 28th. The best thing that she did was she actually went out and started ticketing cars that are there that haven't renewed. And then when they come in to say, wait, 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 she voids the ticket and they sign up. So that's working nicely. Right. So that <laughs> number, and the stick. That number <laughs> should really come up over the now the next the next time you hear an update. How many non-renewals are we just generally? Is it is it's it... she, she's not sure only because she only got about 50% of a response. Okay. Um, the people that are really struggling are the ones who just they waited forever to get that lumber yard permit. They're not going in as much. And now there's so many more daily options between box, car, and all of that. So um, she's going to have a fuller picture at their next uh, parking commission meeting in January. Do we what's, know what's the wait what list their capacity now? is? Well, that's the problem. The wait list is way down. I mean, at one point, it was up to like 1,200. I think it's now still like three, 400 wow. um, on the list. But that's she's working through that as, as she can open up spots. Yeah. She's at it. You know, like Do you know what the capacity is at this point? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, you mean what the capacity are in the lots? Mm -hmm. Well, remember, we double and triple sell. Right. Um, and on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the lots are fairly full, but on Mondays and Fridays. Right. Thursdays. But with that in, in place, are we at 50%, 75%, 90%? of Utilization? Yeah. On Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we're probably at 90%. Mondays and Fridays, we're probably at 50%. Okay. Thank you. So uh, on to interest on investments, that is sitting right now at 65% uh, or 586,000. This number was rerun uh, today and that's at just over 700,000 right now. So it's probably closer to 70 to 75% of the 900,000 that was budgeted. Um, obviously on par to far exceed the 900,000, hopefully 1.25-ish million, hopefully. Uh, by the end of the year, would be a good estimate. Are there any questions on revenues? Okay. What is tipping fees? Oh, garbage haulers. <clears throat> Can I just ask one quick question? Do you ever break out parking by lots versus meter? Uh, I don't uh, expect, meter. Um, revenue. Yeah. Lots versus the meter. I mean, the meters okay. are at the lots, or do you mean different? People well, like parking? the ones where you get a permit. Uh, the parking for the train versus shopping, people meters. paying. So if meters. you go to, I think it's like the second to last page. Yep. The second to last page towards the top. Oh. Parking. There's the kind of parking total and that breaks down the meters. They pass the permits box. Oh, okay, good. And that's how you can see uh, parking meters are pretty much on point. Mm -hmm. And uh, tickets are also at around 40, 41% or so. Great, thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, so on to the expenditures. Expenditures are at 36.79% or 58.4 million. Um, I can say that 
compared to last year at the same exact point, um, the only difference is about a third of a percent from last year's pace. So we're pretty much on target to this year. Anything stick out in particular? Are we good in most of the categories we're still hitting? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anything really is jumping out. Nothing's jumping out right now. Thank you. Questions? Anything else? Questions, everybody? Great job. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Item number eight, adoption of the audit of financial statements, approval of a request to consider the recommendation of the audit committee to accept the audit of financial statements. 15 minutes for Bill Parrott and Ann Kelly. Ned Kangas. Thank you. Thank you. Jacobson. Yeah. What I said. So um, I'll start off, second. okay, and then um, and I'll highlight some of the items in the numbers, so to speak. I think you have the you have the projection or the handouts on your iPad. And it's behind you too, so we have it on the screen. Yeah. So um, just the first page of the audit committee members, we have one open position. Ted Kangas and Robert Flair are not here with us tonight. Um, just kidding, not the next page would be um, just some of the highlights. Uh, during the year, we had uh, six meetings, and then there were numerous other activities, including reading um, the entire report that you have in front of you. And each and every one of those pages. The 2023 um, you know, financial statements, uh, there were a couple of areas focus um, subscription IT agreements, a pension and OPEP, uh, long term liabilities, and the MDNA, which is you know, really well done, explains, I think, uh, pretty well uh, some of the um, important changes in the financial statements and the lease and subscription and the cybersecurity controls. At the end of the day, there's a clean opinion, which is good, in the report from PKF, which is the auditor. There are no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies. If there was a material weakness or a significant deficiency, that would be a problem. And um, we have not had uh, a significant deficiency or a material weakness for probably about nine years now. So way back when, um, nine or 10 years ago, we had quite a number of those, but that's, that's behind us. So. Through that period of time, there's a number of different CFOs, and I think there's been progress for each of the CFOs to make improvements. <clears throat> so the audit committee um, last night met with the uh, finance committee, and um, last night we were we said we were recommending the financial statements save one item, which we were still wrestling to the ground. We're still wrestling that item to the ground, but it's not material enough from a disclosure standpoint, so we've actually taken the disclosure out. So we are actually recommending to the town council that you know that you approve and, and sign and issue the financial statements. That's our recommendation after a completely thorough review. Um, the um, just a couple of other items on the next page. Um, we've um, we I bring this up is because it's been a question on the part of town council in prior years. You know. Are we going to rotate the audit firm that actually uh, does the audit PKF? And it's, um, it's our recommendation that we go out, you know, working with town management to um, solicit um, bids as to who, who else might come in. There's about three firms, PKF, CLA, which is predecessor, the predecessor, the, the firm that merged into them with Blue Shapiro, and then our establishments. Not a lot of firms that do towns of our size. There are some other firms out there, but they're relatively small. Uh, the, the four largest or the six largest accounting firms really do not do towns of our size. And then um, we'll also we'll send the RFP out um, um, probably at the end of December. Also, um, we, we established an internal audit function years ago. Uh, that was working very well. And there were two events that sort of knocked that off track. One was that the name of the firm was Acune. The two principals that did our work both passed away. Unrelated matters, unrelated to the town, was very, very um, sad situation. And then at that same time, COVID hit. And so it was pretty hard to do the internal audit um, remotely, particularly for a new firm. So we sort of suspended that activity. And we will be going out 
or an RFP on internal audit services, which is really very, very important, very critical for us to do. Listed under the subject of internal um, audit services is, is a list of the number of areas, as a itemization of the number of areas that the internal audits have looked at over that four or five year period. And I would say that in each of those areas, there were substantive control weaknesses or substantive things that we had to fix. And they were all fixed without a lot of fanfare, and a lot of hoopla. Some of them were in town, some of them were in the Board of Education. And I think that process worked very well. Given the current reassessment process that we're talking about right now, just to give you a sense, one of the things we looked at was the Board of Assessors and the assessment process, the documentation that stood behind both of those that was reported. And we also looked at who had a reassessment um, or any of those people in positions of significance in the town. And if so, did they get a reassessment consistent with everybody else in town? So you know, that's a, a good process. And I would say there were some substantive changes that were made in those areas. And, and that's best done hands down by an independent audit function, internal audit function, opposed to the outside auditors. Um, working with Ann, I, she and her team, probably maybe a little bit will help Greg Riley will draft those and those will go out here uh, in short order we're talking about next week. And then there'll be a process for us to decide who the internal audit will be and who the external audit will be. Could be the same firm, might be somebody different. And at the end of the day, while everybody will have a chance to provide input, since they are independent order functions, that should be the decision of the audit committee at that particular point in time. Depending on when that decision is made, it depends very much on who is actually making that decision, whether it's these guys on the audit committee or some other people on the audit committee. Um, there's opportunities for improvement. Um, this is Ann's third year, I think, right? Second year. No, Going into the second year. No. Second year, right? You were first year. Yep, second cycle, right? So, you know, looking at the year and closing process, and then we had some reporting suggestions. Then there's always that um, shared service um, mm -hmm. opportunity between the Board of Education and the town. I think that's on the list because it's good to have on the list, but I probably don't think that would get accomplished in the next year or two. I think that's a, a longer term aspiration, which was probably appropriate. And then um, some of the things that we had taken a look at from a report card standpoint. And they said there were no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies. Um, there's probably not as many suggestions for areas of improvement or benchmarking against other towns from the in, from the current external orders that we would like. You know, so I think that's one of the things that we'll be focusing on in the RFP process that goes out. I think communication between the town and the Board of Education is excellent. Um, I think that uh, we have an excellent relationship with with Brian, and when we want to focus on a particular area, from Brian and his team, I don't mean just to say him. And so that that works um, you know, very well. And of course, PKF, not only what is the town, but also the Board of Education, which is part of the town. And all of that's in the numbers that you see in front of you. Um, and I think um, just a big thank you to, um, to Deanna and Kevin, um, you know, certainly Ann. Brian, the superintendent, Sean, who's on his team, uh, PKF, and then there were lots of other people on um, everybody's staff who really worked pretty well, including the audit committee. A lot of good hard work on, on their part and predecessors as well. So there's excellent cross functional cooperation. That's it. Answer any questions. Otherwise, we recommend you approve the financial statements as presented to you, as prepared by the town. Questions, anybody? Um, I have a question, but you mentioned earlier um, it's a, a best practice to rotate audit firms. Can you comment a little bit more on that and your general um, overall uh, assessment of uh, PKF's performance? Do you care to comment on that? Yeah. I think, um, first of all, um, the, the bidding process um, in general is a is a good thing for towns to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the public sector, um, I'm, not, I, I'm not so sure ro rotating firms is as important as it is in the, you know, in the 
uh, like the, the public companies, you know, listed companies opposed to towns. I think it's more important than the town. One of the problems you have is that the accounting profession has a shortage of people coming into it. So there's a drought of talent coming into the accounting profession. So the big firms, the medium-sized firms, it's a real problem with small firms. Uh, I think that we did. Um, the other thing is we paid them about $100,000, a little bit less than that. It's really not a lot of money for the amount of, for the, for the assignment that they have. Um, and a disproportionate amount of that money is spent on the preparation of the financial statements and the preparation of the document that you have in front of you. And very little of that money is spent on the controls and checks and balances that are really so important to you and so important to me as a citizen, right? And that's why the internal audit part is so, that's why the internal audit function is so important. Um, you know, um, I would think I mean, one way of looking at PKF would say, well, you know, I did an audit, we got through, we don't have any material leaks or two. But um, I'm used to more constructive suggestions for improvement and being out in front of that a little bit. And um, sometimes uh, the process of doing an RFP, you can, you can achieve that and maintain the same firm. And sometimes you actually have to switch firms. So you know, I would say, as far as I was concerned, PKF would have as equal chance as every other firm. But in order, you know, unless somebody didn't demonstrate, unless there were, were other firms that couldn't demonstrate that they were good, but I think PKF um, would have to demonstrate to me as one person that they could have some more constructive suggestions and uh, ways for improvement that at least I haven't seen at this particular point in time, if I was to recommend to retain them going forward. So I've done a quality audit, but I don't think that extra is in there that, yeah. And we it used to be, but it's not today. So let's put follow up. Okay. So in the development of the new, of the RFP, can we address any of these concerns that we've just outlined? We guess absolutely, yeah. And then are we? This is more important question. Are, they, are we addressing these types of concerns that you have? There's more constructive advice. Are we, you know, juicing up the hundred thousand dollars more? Because it kind of sounds like PKF was a little bit limited in terms of what it was doing for whatever reasons. Um, so I, I would like to know if that can get you know, addressed in the RFP. Well, we, we we would put that in RFP. I would think one of the things I would ask for that we haven't asked for, but maybe we should have, is I would ask for them to, you know, when I. I mean, I was an auditor for a long period of time. When I finished, I mean, I always, every year, left the client I served with a letter of things that we did to differentiate ourselves, differentiate ourselves in a positive way. And I think that's one of the things that I would look for. Whatever for, you know, what, okay, you paid hundred thousand dollars. What have you done besides the statutory requirement to sign off on the report? And there should be some checking this out. I'm not suggesting that the people aren't good people, you know, and uh, if they were to do a special assignment, they could do it, possibly do it very well. It's just the engagement of, you know, delivering the audit, we can get a little bit more out of that. I think that's important. I mean, you know, it's become a little bit a commodity in terms of accounting, Larkham gobbling up a lot of people in Long Island, KPMG. Uh, so just making sure that we have that personal feel and touch and then having an outline because, you know, with all the firms merging, that's kind of like uh, banking. Um, you want to make sure that the person, the people that we're dealing with is, is clearly defined of what our expectations are and that we have that intimate personal relationship. I think that's a good way of putting it. Clearly defined our expectation. They're clearly defined the yeah. appearing that they need to do. And, and, and then also asking, well, how much would that cost us? Yeah. They and might be, say it's going to cost us $10,000 more or some other number, but then you know we're getting the value out of it. Yeah, so it's not a commodity. We're looking yeah. for value add. Right. Um, and what happens is that the account has become uh, you know, a commodity and then hey, who's the cheapest and then I'm going to go with you and as long as you could check the box uh, and say this is what we received. Uh, so I, I think that's, those are very valid and excellent points. And you all have that with all your service providers in your own home, right? People you've had for 10 or 15 years, you've got to sort of, okay, you've been around for a long time, you know, that don't take me for granted. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, so it's not a criticism of them. It's, it's not at all. I, I think it's, it, I think it, the setting the clear expectations for everyone, then we <laughs> need to define success, yeah. right? So that, hey, this is what we're expecting, not just, okay, check the box. I got this type of level of reporting and now I'm good here. Is that we want that engagement and that personal intimacy. And one of the reasons the, um, 
the very largest firms are the ones to get around with mm -hmm. probably the tier under that because these firms are pretty small to deal mm -hmm. with. One of the reasons they don't do town, the economics are just not there. Of course. I'd just like to, to add that it is my understanding in the Connecticut statutes, it requires the municipality to go out to bid every about five or six years right. for internal auditors. So it's not up to us. I mean, we have to follow the statutes. But, but it's um, probably been, but you know, sometimes they can be an extenuation for yeah. COVID. And, you know, yes. last year we were, I think we probably told the town council when the prior CFO was here that we were you know, getting ready to go out for bid. Mm -hmm. And then we change CFOs. That was absolutely the wrong time to change the order. <laughs> right. So, you know. Yeah. And I want to be clear. One thing is that um, um, I, you know, I said that the um, decision really of selecting the internal and the external order should be with the audit committee. I think that's the way it's been written in our charter. And I think that's the way it is in practice. Um, that's important because they need to be independent. So and sometimes people say, can you have somebody be an internal auditor working for the town? Well, who are they going to report to and are they really independent? And it's not a criticism. Anybody in town, that's just an independent audit function. In every big company in the world, the decision is made by the audit committee. Yeah. You know, but it's done in collaboration with the CFO. You couldn't hire an auditor without getting the input from the CFO. You know, this going to work. Yeah, just the group of people work with RT. And so on, and we're the as well. Sorry. So, a really quick question. So, it seems like this is very, a very well run organization in general, but I, the opportunities that you kind of outlined, I think, are pretty interesting. Are, do you see any challenges being able to pursue some of these ideas within the small group? Are there any challenges that you see? Challenges in terms of, in terms of evaluating them, getting the small group together? Do you see any, um, is there a plan to, to follow through with? Looking well, at these opportunities. You know, and uh, I think that that's as we now wrap up the audit, that's one thing we've really got to sit down with Ann to, to really talk about. Um, because last year, you know, surviving last year, getting through last year was, was important. And, and, you know, I'm not trying to minimize how much, how hard that was, right? Uh, Ann's commitment, everybody was, um, we'll get this thing filed in December if we got that done. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's not easy. So now, you know, we've been talking about some of these things and we suggest we have a working group. You know, it's um, a close year and closing cycle. We're, we're, as, we're as good or equal to 100, 159 of the or 160 towns in a closing cycle. It takes six months for towns to close. It takes Oracle when the boards are on eight days. And, and you know, so, that, you know, it's different. So I'm just saying, I, I think... We're, we're doing, we're, we're no worse than anybody else. I'm not suggesting. In fact, there's probably a lot probably of towns that most probably better than most. The real question is, can we be better? Why would we want to get it done early? Only just so you, I mean, this, I'm sure this report's a pain in the neck for Ann and her team to get done. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we're a pain in the neck to, to work with that time <laughs> on that subject. But, <laughs> so the answer is there are opportunities and we would be. So, you know, and we, have, we have over the years had, these. We over the years have had some work to do. Yeah. The only reason I'm asking is if there's something we can do to help um, facilitate that, because it sounds like there's some opportunities we can look at, and, and that's all I was asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any challenges, something that we can help you? Um, um, the, the only one would be in uh, shared services, but I think that's a, you know, with the Board of Education, and that's, uh, I, I, I want to be careful. I'm not pushing and that I'm not out. suggesting any one thing. I was just yeah. thinking there's yeah. a bunch so of opportunities, that, uh, just being able to evaluate them. I yeah. think uh, my... Talk to Deanna a little bit with the first you know, I think we have a, you know, I think we have a way of really moving forward. With process of doing yeah. this, right? But if we didn't, we can come back and, and talk. Right. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah. So um, I did give you some slides. Um, Mostly the, the main slide that most people look at or the Board of Finance is looking at was the last one because that's the one of us. It's, let me, I'll, I'll back up for those weeks. Our financials are done in three different methods, budgetary, modified approval, and full approval. So, and it's government-wide and it's proprietary. So we have all these different reports in there. So it gets confusing when you look at a fund balance at the very back and you say $35 million is a fund balance. Well, that's not the general fund that you know when you set the budget. That's not that, that's government law. So um, 
that's that's the main one that the Board of Finance questions were coming in. Why did that go off? Because we have a government wide type of reporting versus general fund. Um, so if there was any particular questions, because I, I don't want to bore into all the weeds in it, but I just want to explain that last slide because uh, that's the one that's actually based on capital projects. It based on whether we bond or not. So we either have revenue coming in or we don't, and that shows that fluctuation on it. But it has it doesn't have a major effect on the general fund. Um, what we call the general yeah, what you yes. call the general fund. Yeah, yeah, generally think yeah, about the general because that's yeah. what you're voting that's what you're mainly voting on. Yes. Yeah. So um, but what you get here is all our funds. We you know probably 30 plus funds, 25, 30 funds that will all get compiled mm -hmm. together in the government fund. Um, what I also attached was um, the milestones or the accomplishments of the finance department for the last year. Yeah. Um, so, um, Bill had said last year was a very, very challenging year, and so was this year for finance on the things that we needed to do. Um, some of the main things that we did was um, we closed out 351 projects with the help of DPW and uh, Board of Ed, and we reassigned all those funds to uh, any excess funds to other funds. Um, we closed out seven funds that were no longer really active but had small balances in it to clean that up. Um, we uh, did regular reconciliations of the bank sheets, our balance sheet bank reconciliations um, to clean up that. So that's done on a monthly basis. Um, our biggest thing that had the most impact, I believe, to the town was we, um, I consolidated cash accounts and how we manage our cash. So I set up a lot of ZBA, zero balance accounts, like a feeder fund. Mm -hmm. So we have our main account that, that supports all the other um, cash accounts that have activity in it. But by doing that, I could bring it all into one area, keep it at a $5 million level for worried about the uh, collateralization and insurance. And then the rest can go for partly into money market so that we have liquidity for ongoing expenses. And then the rest could go to investment. So in doing that, we were able to turn over another 20 million every six months, five to six months to turn over to the treasurer to invest by consolidating those funds, taking the tax funds and getting it in quicker. So we used to do five check loans a week, we're down to one. Um, we uh, did a lot of um, internal controls where we went into our system and did workflow processes to make sure that everyone's position had their right access levels. They weren't above or below. Um, we automated a lot of processes that, you know, budget transfers, so there's not a lot of paper floating around. Departments have to bring over a piece of paper to us to do a budget transfer. It's all done electronically through their own departments and goes to Josh. Um, there was an implementation of two different softwares that had an effect on finance. Park and Rec's Transfer Station and uh, Lapham all got into um, uh, MyRec which has made it so much easier from us from uh, consolidation and also reconciliation. That was a very, very difficult manual process for us. Uh, this past November, um, OpenGov went into place, um, which now is an automatic process from us. Uh, again, that was a manual process. We had to hand key all those entries in. Now we can upload it into the system for, um, for reconciliation. We took capital assets that were held in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and brought it into our system. So this past year has seen a lot of improvement processes by finance and with the support of you know administration and the um, the departments. It was a lot of change for some of them because we put things in place that we changed what's always been done um, and they were very receptive to it. Um, so we, we, we set goals, finance is now setting goals for our next year of what are the things we wanna get into and what are the things we need to change and processes, there's still more processes we want to change and update. Um, but I wanted to make you aware of some of the things in this last year, what we did. I have a question. You just mentioned that you consolidated, you you zeroed out uh, certain um, capital project accounts, and then you moved the funds to other projects? Yeah, so <clears throat> we typically uh, bond in arrears. So we have a lot of, uh, when I got to bond in February, you know, we're bonding for projects that have been completed. So we have um, projects that were authorized but not bonded. So when you have when you close down a project and you have excess, say it was bonded a hundred percent, but you ended up only spending you know ninety percent of that, that money can now get reassigned to another project that's authorized but not bonded. Who authorizes that? You do. So okay. in, in the in the annual process, 
when all those projects come in front of you, capital projects, tax supported, uh, tax supported when they're authorized, we have those long lists of okay. authorization. They're done in buckets, so you won't identify them as large amounts because we do them in buckets. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make different. sure. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> when I say <laughs> that, if you remember, we, we do a lot in buckets. Yeah. So um, we got a lot of those cleaned up and closed down. Thank you. Very impressive. And yes, yeah, very, really yeah, very impressive. impressive. Any other questions? Anybody? Nope. All right, so then we'll have a motion. Yes. Motion to approve the recommendation of the audit committee to accept the audited financial statements. Uh, we have a motion. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Luke. Discussion. May I? May we have a copy of the audited financial statements? Oh, will we get the final one? It would go out to everyone. Okay. Oh yes. Thank you. Have it. Okay. Okay. Having no further discussion, uh, we'll now vote. Uh, all in favor? Motion is unanimous. Great Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all right. that was my Next up. We have Colin Dobbin and Bob Hamill are both online uh, joining us. Today. Fantastic. So uh, <laughs> item number nine, appointments for the approval of the following appointments to the Board of Finance to confirm the appointment of Robert Hamill and Colin Dobbin as regular members for a team for a term ending November 15, 2027. Uh, my apologies to everybody. I had a bike accident yesterday and had to have some uh, stitches put in. So you don't want to see what my face looks like tonight. Uh, apologies. Yeah, it's it, it, it could have been worse. It's all, uh, I'm all good, but my face is a little uh, messed up. So um, I already sorry. hear that, Colin. I hope you wish for a speedy recovery there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, I guess both of you just give a, a quick um, quick bio of why you're so awesome. And uh, <laughs> okay. so maybe, Bob, why don't you go first? And uh, Sorry, Robert, why don't you go first? And then, sure. Uh, sure. I, Bob is fine. Okay. Um, well, I grew up in town, uh, went to West School, Sachs, the high school. Um, so I, I, I do bring, I think, a unique vantage point. Uh, I was elected to town council. I uh, did sat in your seats from, uh, I did one term, and then my commute got the better of me. So from uh, 09 to 2013, sat on town council. So I, I definitely have the viewpoint of the budget process from your seats as well. Um, commuted 25 years, uh, raised a family here, and uh, have been an alternate for three years now. So I'm definitely up the learning curve and uh, looking forward to trying to help the town stay, uh, you know, stay in the, in the low tax, uh, high quality of life, uh, you know, that I've been used to as a, as a resident for literally since the age of eight. So uh, anyway, um, be glad to answer any questions, but uh, that's my background. I, I I went to Hamilton College and Harvard Business School and, and um you know, the one thing I've really been focused on is helping with the cash management with uh, um, Andrew Brooks. So we've been working together, but uh, that's that's enough for me. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. Um, Colin? Um, yeah, hi, um, hi everyone. Uh, I think I think I know most of you. Uh, I've lived in town since 1993. Uh, like Bob, uh, I raised a family here. My kids are now 30 and 28. Um, I'm a, I was a corporate lawyer uh, for 38 years at um, MasterCard and prior to that at PepsiCo. I also was at uh, Skadden Arps um, uh, earlier in my career. Um, I was the head of intellectual property at MasterCard um, and built up a team. So I had about 20 lawyers or 20 professionals reporting to me uh, at the end. I retired uh, last year when I turned 65. Um, and um, uh, I was on the uh, Inland Wetlands Commission for about 15 years. Um, and uh, at a certain point, I was approached to consider other things. And um, so I was uh, appointed as an alternate to the Board of Finance. And I think I've also been on probably about the same amount of time that Bob has, two or three years. And I've also had to come up the learning curve a bit. Uh, because as a lawyer, you know, finance is not the, um, wasn't quite in my wheelhouse, but I think I've learned a lot by being uh, on the Board of Finance and served on some of the subcommittees like the, uh, the Pension and OPEB uh, Committee. 
Um, and um, I also do have a little bit of a financial background. I, I studied in an MBA program uh, at NYU. I have a Fordham Law School uh, degree, JD. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I think it's been a good experience for me. I, um, I, I agree with Bob that, you know, I think uh, our object should be to uh, use, take as little away from uh, taxpayers in money as possible, get the most efficient government that we, we can. And I think we do a very good job in this town. Uh, I've always been impressed with the, uh, uh, with the town um, uh, employees and, and the town government generally. That's, you, a, that's about me. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments? Let me I just want to comment. You, you guys know that we watch a lot of uh, Board of Finance meetings, and we very much appreciate your, uh, your contribution, and in particular, d your demeanor. So I'm delighted to have the opportunity to renew your terms tonight. I'm a yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we have such talented. I mean, it's just so impressive whenever someone is coming up for an appointment and you hear their background. You just, we are so lucky to have such great talent and people willing to come forward and serve. So thank you. And with such a great uh, Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you. It is the season. Thank you for both stepping up and serving. The community is uh, lucky to uh, have uh, you guys devoting your time. So really appreciate Colin it. Colin is Colin's great. We were neighbors together, ironically, when we, when uh, actually I moved back to town after school and working in the city. So uh, he's a pleasure to work with and um, happy to, happy to serve with him. Our, our, we had kids, I think, two weeks apart in 1993. Uh -huh. And then the second ones also, I think, were about two weeks apart in 1995. <laughs> Love it. All right. So let's get a motion here to confirm the appointments of Robert Hamill and Colin Dobbin as regular members for a term ending November 15th, 2027. Will we have someone make that motion? Second. Discussion. Vote. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passed. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So before we... um. Just two things. So, point of chairman's privilege. Um, one quick thing: uh, you'll all see the committee assignments have been handed out. Uh, so let it be uh, written. Let it be done. Those are the committee appointments. Uh, if anyone has any particular objection or repulse there on a subject committee, uh, just let me know. We'll certainly consider it. But I. Was, uh, we took into account people's uh, preferences, uh, and I think it was important to kind of rotate and change some things up. So um, take a look and let us know um, if you have any uh, changes or questions. And we'll talk further about the, how I kind of envision the committee is moving forward. But as I gave my kind of quick update, well, it's not necessarily, I think it's pretty much about it. Um, just real quick. Um, so, the police department is doing a, um, they have a wall of children's names in Nimi. It's just a quick announcement. Um, at their new headquarters at 39 Locust. I was there today to pick up a couple of the um, them for my, my kids to do a little active service. There's still a ton available. So I just wanted to sort of put that word out there that if you have the time and the energy and the bandwidth, none of which I have, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, there's a lot of really deserving kids of all ages in our community that could use some holiday spirit. So I would encourage you, it's three wrapped gifts by Sunday. So if you just go to 39 Locust and walk right in that door off of Forest Street, <clears throat> right on the wall there. And it's, um, so my kids are super first. excited. It's not a name, it's just a, the, or not a name. It's like just a... the gender and the age. Okay. And yeah. you get three gifts and Anna Maria CC, who's a wonderful community officer here is running the whole show. And so I just wanted to plug yeah. that for anybody who might be interested is in, it specific did they tell us what gifts to get no or you, it's three it's gifts of your choice age appropriate gifts of your choice so you know if you get something to read something to wear something to read what is the age range uh the youngest i saw was today this is just anecdotal yeah. is was two and the oldest i think i saw was 15 or 16. so it's a wide range of kids and it's local and this is a way to have a real local immediate impact on members of our community so i would just encourage you and you know encourage your friends to um Go take a look. And so how were the, the police department chose the kids? Like how did, how did how were these kids chosen? I'm not exactly sure. Okay. I I would assume it's a reference. I bet. Health and Human Services. Yeah, probably Bethany. Right? Yes, so, cool. No, it's probably from Bethany. Awesome. 
So yeah. I, it's just, you know, if you're looking, particularly because a lot of people at this time of year ask for service activities for their kids and a lot of the charities and things because of legal reasons that have age limits, this is a really great way to get involved with kids in the process. I chose I chose two kids that were close in age to my kids so that they could go get the crap. Um, but there's like, again, there's every age of it. So I would just encourage you guys to take a look and maybe tell your friends. And it's by Sunday, so it's really time is up the essence. Anyway, sorry. Thank oh, you. Oh, I'm glad you made that. That was an awesome announcement. I actually have one other kind of privilege in um, <laughs> One happens to be uh, the big main event of the um, New Canaan Rams football team Woo! winning their 14th title. Awesome. Uh, the Class L final, they beat Darianne, which makes it even better. <laughs> uh, it was a great game, and I was, I was happy to get up there and, uh, and see it in person. So that's off to the entire team, the coaching staff. Um, it was a, a, a tough season, but they made it through, and they prevailed, and they're champions, and uh, we're super proud of uh, all of them, really. The second uh, uh, the other sub part to my uh, point of privilege is – Going back uh, one one game, they, uh, the Rams played uh, Maloney, and it was uh, a rainy, cold day, and um, it was a tough pitch battle. Uh, it was eight, uh, the score was tied 8-8 with a few minutes left uh, in the fourth quarter. You know, and the kids were just playing their hearts out, and the coaches were doing what the coaches do. Uh, you know, you could feel the electricity in, in the damp air, and um, – just it was a real quick, it was, this, I think it has a really nice ending. Um, I happened to be on the field. I was on the sidelines. Uh, I was with, well, I was with uh, uh, Tom O'Day as well. And, uh, you know, our team, we marched down, and it was about a, maybe a minute and a half left in the game. And, you know, like I said, tie score. Uh, we just we were having a tough time getting to the first down, so we decided to um, kick, try a field goal. Now – yeah, it was it four seconds. Four seconds. Sorry, left. four seconds. Left. So it was four seconds left, and um, you know, having having played high school football, I can tell you that's it was a very far field goal, like total hail mary to try to make that uh, a field goal. Um, and fortunately, uh, <laughs> there were two offsides penalties by the Maloney defense, which gave us another ten yards closer to the field goal. And the uh, the play went off. The ball was kicked, and when, we, when I tell you, it was like one raindrop over that crossbar, and it made it right. Uh -huh. So had those penalties not happened, it would it would it would not have we wouldn't have prevailed. But it was what happened next to me just absolutely blew me away. Um, I was taking like a million photos of, of all of the frenzy and, you know, the kids and going nuts and everything, but something caught my eye. Actually, I didn't see it at first until I looked, I looked in the photo that I took. And it happened to be one of our players. Um, while all the other ones were just hooting, hollering, you know, uh, jumping up and down for joy, which was awesome. And it was their right to do that. It was one of our players didn't do that. He went over to, there was a Maloney player, it was one of the ones, the kids that went off sides, and he was sitting on the ground, essentially crying, um, you know, weight of the world on his shoulders that he shouldered, you know, the loss for his team, right, the difference between making it to the championship and not, which is a game of inches, as we know that game. Um, our player, number nine, um, wasn't celebrating with the rest of his teammates what he did was he walked over to that player who was crying on the ground knelt down and started to console him and you know it's one of those moments that kind of takes your breath away to see that happen where you have a, you know a, a child that has the sensitivity um the honor and the integrity as a victor to, to have more compassion for that the, the other child who was blaming himself for the loss. And I was so taken aback by it. I literally was blown away that our community, our school system, with Dr. Lutze at the helm and our coaching staff, you know, Chris Silvestri, Lou Marinelli. I mean, to, to have a, a, a product like that of our children in this town, I think is just an absolute testament to all those who I just named in our community and really represents the true best of us. And I have that photo. I put it on your tablets. I, yeah, I don't know if you could look at it, but if you want it, you could look at it. I have the photo of the child. Um, it's the first item on your tablet, it, top yeah. of the list. And I just, his name is Luke Bopp. Uh, and I just wanted to give him a special shout out. 
uh, and his parents is most important because it you know really does come down to the parents and, and how the children conduct themselves. So I'm just blown away, and I I I, I, I you know, gave the similar type of a comment to the coaches, and, and they appreciated it. So I just wanted to bring that to our attention of just the caliber of. If you have someone, you can see it. Yeah, and actually, there was more than he wasn't. He was the first. He wasn't the only. Yeah, no, there yeah. were others. Yeah. I have. Some I just problems. mean, it's not just. It was to your point. Yeah. It's it's the program. It's not yeah. even just that. It's it's more than just one person. It's it's the way. I think our team is. Um, it's the it's the symbol it really of helps. the entire program, yeah. the school system, our community, the parents, everyone that's involved. Uh, I just wanted to suss that out yeah. to uh, Luke. Yeah, it's important that today's meeting. Oh, here we go. More of a with that said, uh, we'll have a motion to adjourn. Anyone want to make that motion? Uh, so moved. And would you like to tell us where we're going? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. So if anyone has to... Need a second and a vote? <laughs> <laughs> no discussion ever. Yeah, I think we could all head on over to Gates for a, a quick drink if you have the time. If not, understood. Uh, with that said... Uh, I'll second the motion to adjourn. Motion passes. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.